Let's now talk about what connects convex sets and convex functions. As you might have already suspected, there are close connections and parallel things uh, between convex sets and convex functions. So, for example, sets, convex sets and convex functions, um, we have, first of all, convexity. So con we have the concept of convex sets and convex functions. Um, we have uh, closed sets and lower semi-continuous functions. Um, those interact. Um, not, oh, they, those guarantee similar properties as we have seen in, in the last video. And we have non-empty sets and proper functions. And what we, ha what we have seen in the exercises, for example, we have the convex hull. And here we have the convex envelope. And um, you might now ask, how are these things connected? And it will turn out that um, one very tight connection is via the so-called epigraph. OK. Um, let's first draw a picture. And so we, we see that we, uh, so, so we see what uh, the epigraph is geometrically. So you might draw some, some convex function here. I don't know. Um, so if you call this function f here, then you see that you have the graph of the function, which is um, basically set in, yeah, not Rn. We are always working in, in, a, in a space H, and we are working in, or with extended real values, which cannot be mapped here. Um, so you have a function here, and this is the graph of the function. The graph is an element of, of h times r, so it consists of pairs of uh, elements in h and real numbers. And then you have the so-called epigraph of f, which is everything which is above the graph. So it is this here. So this is the epigraph. And you see that the epigraph is convex if and only if the function is convex, we will show that. Uh, we will also show that the epigraph of the function is um, closed whenever the function itself is lower semi-continuous. Um, this is not so clear. This is, does not always hold here. Um, and the convex hull and the convex envelope, they are also connected. So if you take a function, an arbitrary function, and uh, you take the convex hull of the epigraph, and then take the, the inf for, for each x, you take the infimum in the epigraph, and then you, uh, infimum of the convex hull of the epigraph, then you get the convex envelope. This is, um, this is also a connection. So here, the, these things are not so clear. Another thing how these properties are connected are indicator functions. So if you have, I also have to, to draw this in, in one dimension here. So whenever you have a, a set C here, um, then you have this indicator function, which is 0 on C and plus infinity otherwise. So it's the, so the graph of this is only, only this um, line here. So the line is at 0, and everything else is uh, is, is not uh, visible in, in, this, in this picture. So if you take the indicator function of, the, of, uh, of C and you take its epigraph, then it's this thing here. Okay? And here you have the same thing. Whenever uh, the set C is convex, then the epigraph of, uh, uh, then, the, then this uh, indicator function is convex. 
Whenever this set C is closed, then the indicator function is lower semi-continuous. Whenever C is non-empty, then uh, the indicator function is proper, and uh, the convex hull, uh, the indicator, uh, the, the convex envelope of the indicator function of a set is the the indicator function of the convex hull. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so uh, these are the two ways these things are connected. We have defined indicator functions and now we will define epigraphs. Um, so let's get, let's get to the definition. Let f from h to r bar, extended real line, be a function. And then we have actually two objects which we want to define, a the epigraph um, we call we, we define we name this epi f and this is a subset of h times r notice that even though we have r bar here it's still r here um, because we can uh, r bar is not a vector space and we cannot define convexity there Okay, um, is defined as um, FPF. So this is, since we are in H times R, this is a set of pairs. And we choose the pairs such that F of X is less or equal than R. So as you see, here you have f of x. Um, the, the point here is, is x. And then everything such that f of x is less or equal than r is element of the epigraph. Okay. And then it's oftentimes convenient to also have the notion of the strict epigraph. So the strict epigraph and we call this epi s of f is also an element of h times r is defined as and now we have epi s of f and here we have pairs x and r such that f of x is strictly less than r um, and it will turn out obviously um, this thing will not be closed because it doesn't contain the, 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 the graph, which is part of its boundary. Um, but convexity will still uh, give some good indication for the strict epigraph. And sometimes from the perspective of having a proof, it's better to use the, it's better to show, or it's easier. Uh, it's obviously not better to, to show, but it's, it might be easier to show convexity of the strict epigraph than it is to show the convexity of a function because you have to deal with several edge cases otherwise. Okay, so this is the strict epigraph and just for completeness um, we will define the, the operations which we, which we have here in, in, in h times r. So operations in h times r. Um, so whenever we have two points in h times r, um, when we want, whenever we want to add them, we say we just add the components x plus y, r plus s. Whenever we have the, uh, some, we want to take some multiple, um, we just I'm going to take the components here. That's pretty standard. Um, so the question is which inner product we, we take here. And so, so the inner product between two pairs is just the sum of those two inner products here. And so we take the inner product of x and y and the inner product of r and s. r and s are elements of r. This will be just the um, the product, the usual product of of R and S. 
Um, we will use the inner product here, not in the next videos, but uh, later when we when we want to apply our convex separation theorems in in this for for this epigraph, and then we need this. And for this also, just for completeness, um, the norm of such an element is then defined as as usual as the um, the norm of uh, this in the inner product with itself, which is then uh, the, the square root of the inner product with itself, x norm of x square plus r square. Uh, yeah, just for completeness sake. Um, that's as if you would take h equal to rn, and then you have rn plus 1 here. Um, but since we have not given any explicit definition, here are our operations.